So, you want to make your own mechanical keyboard? Well, I'm glad you clicked on this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how. Right after our sponsor. Nah, I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. I'm not Linus. Speaking of Linus, him and his team actually covered a really decent video on how to make your own mechanical keyboard. It's that our total cost topped 350 US dollars before shipping or taxes. And the way he showcased it was, in my opinion, quite rough. A DIY mechanical keyboard doesn't really cost that much if you consider the availability of options on so many websites today. You have plastic cases, you have metal cases like this aluminium one, and you have so many kits available which make it quite cheap for you to buy the kit, get some of the tools and make it yourself. In his video, he quoted it for 550 Australian dollars in comparison. and. He bought things that he really didn't need, like switch springs and stuff like that. As a beginner, I would be buying those things. So today, I'm going to show you what an actual budget-friendly keyboard would be, and what parts you would get, and how to build it yourself. So let's get started. So today, we're going to be making a 60% mechanical keyboard, just like Linus did. But we'll be using a cheaper through-hole PCB to solder in the switches and a 60% keyboard is a great start if you want to reduce your keyboard workspace. So to keep it simple, we have bought the same 60% kit from KBD Fans which comes with a PCB, case, key stabilizers and a switch plate. Thankfully Wave from KBD Fans sponsored us this 60% Tofu kit so I can show you guys how to properly solder a mechanical keyboard. For this video today, we're going to be using Carly's new cream switch from Novel Keys and it's available on their website, you can go check it out below. Basically, it's a new linear switch which features a palm housing which is self-lubricating and it's actually really good to the touch. I actually think it feels better than most of the cherry variants of linear switches such as the red switch. In my opinion, with some lubing, this would probably be an awesome switch. So I think for the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to lube your own switches. I really suggest you actually try a different switch than typical cherry switches. So you can go to Novel Key's website who has a variety of switches you can try. And the cream is all my choice so I think I'm going to be putting this in the keyboard. Alright let's stop talking and get this keyboard started. Now before we start this keyboard you want to test that PCB. Faults can happen at any stage of this process so it's best to know of them now than later. Using the keyboard tester website and a tweezer, you, all you have to do is plug in the PCB, short the switch pads and it will report which switches are not working. And when you've tested the PCB, you want to install your stabilizers. Good stabilizers is the key to a great performing keyboard. That is why I'm going to show you how to lube them for the best experience. So to start we're going to do the clipping mod. You may or may not see these plastic legs with your set of stab stems and if you do, follow these steps. The legs shown are not needed and affect the typing experience. Snip them off as shown, being careful to keep the bottom as flat as possible. Do this to the rest of the stems and get some dielectric lube and a brush. Put some of the lube on the brush and evenly distribute that lube over the stems as shown. Then, evenly coat the rest of the stems, the inside of the casing that holds the stem, and the angled sides of the metal bars. If you have lubed all the parts, you can then proceed to putting them together by inserting the stem into the casing, making sure the missing notch matches the notch in the casing. If you have done it correctly, you will see the two holes where the entry is. Insert the metal bar included in the kit into the lowest hole and push the bar into the slot to hold it into place and then rinse and repeat. To insert your stabilizers into the PCB, you will need to align the hook side of the casing to the large hole and the clip to the smallest hole. Then push the clip into the hole and test if your stabilizer is working right. Now in this mod, I'm doing something called the Band-Aid mod and Nathan Kim has an actual really good video on how to do a Band-Aid mod. But in this video, I'm trying something more experimental. So bear with me with the video I'm showing to you. And I'll provide a link in the description to Nathan Kim's video on how to lube your stabilizers properly. Okay, so now you've installed all your stabilizers and you've checked them, we're going to install the switches. Now, I actually lubed the creams prior to this video. And I wanted to lube them because I really wanted to try how they felt and I never had a lube switch before 
and I'm going to insert them into the plate so we can put the keyboard together and align the switches in a way that matches the standard layout for most 60% keyboards. But to do this, we need to know how to put the switches in properly. You will notice when you've inserted a switch correctly, when you see the two switch legs and the three legs popping out, they have to be popping out really well and the switch itself has to be flat on the PCB. If you do not see a leg popping through, it means you bent it and you have to take it out and then put it back in and straighten the leg and it's the worst thing to do. I recommend just replacing the switch and putting a new one in. On the DZ60, you also want to make sure you're putting the switches in the square pads and not the circle ones. This is so the keycaps fit on the bottom row. If you don't, you will have to desolder the switches and it won't be fun. So always double check. Now this is probably the best step of building your keyboard. Putting the switches in, you feel like you have control of what you're building and you love what you're making. And this is the whole point of keyboards, it's just to feel good. Once you have confirmed everything has been put into the PCB and it's all good, it's all working, the stabilizers have been checked for consistency and that they're smooth, then it's time for soldering. Try not to burn yourself. Now a lot of you guys have asked me, what's the best soldering iron, Joe? Well there's no best soldering iron, they're all really good, it just depends on your skill. The two I recommend is a TS-80 and the TS-100. Both are really really good at what they do, and they're very cost effective. Unlike most of the soldering irons you can get from typical stores around you, these irons have loads of tips available, and the community really recommends them as a hobbyist. And you're probably asking, what type of solder do I need? You need 6040 leaded solder, 0.7mm is good enough for most of these applications, and try and get good solder. Doing so will have better results, and I'm hoping the people in the community will suggest solder types that are available in their own countries. But typically sticking to 6040 leaded solder of any brand should be fine. Alternatively, you can dodge all those steps and just go to a hacker space. You don't have to purchase nothing, everything is available to you, and you're using 15k of equipment. But most importantly, you have people to support you, you have the tools available to you, and everything you need to get your keyboard started. So go get searching, go find your nearest hacker space, and go visit them. They love seeing people, and they got so much things for you to use. So before we solder, we want to make sure we eat, because we cannot ingest any solder. Uh, it's really bad for us. So before we even touch the solder, you want to wash your hands, you want to eat your food first because I'm bloody hungry. Mm. Vegemite, man. And then, you always want to wear eye protection. Don't forget this. Solder splashes can really do some damage. So, protect your eyes. Okay guys, we're nearly finished. Now to start soldering. So the first thing you want to do is you want to set your temperature between 360 to 390 degrees. The irons I suggested before do have temperature regulation, so you can choose the temperature you want. The cheaper irons will not likely have a temperature option and you probably have to choose between certain wattages. Between 30 and 60 is pretty good for most keyboards. I've seen many YouTubers in the past try and solder the mechanical keyboard, of course as novices I can understand that, but it's time to show you guys how to actually solder and to do it right. So while you're soldering you want to make sure that you're always touching the two components you want to heat up in order for the solder to flow inside the joint. So for example in this switch I'm touching it, I'm pressing against, pressing, not pushing, pushing is a bit too hard, just pressing against the pin and the pad. Then I'm inserting my solder, very slowly, into the joint and for about 5 or 10 seconds, letting the solder heat up, flow into the channel and letting go. As long as you're not pushing too hard, 
or you're not reflowing it as in you're, you're putting solder in again and again and again to try and make it look nice as long as you're not doing it five or six times you're not going to break the pad so stop worrying about broken pads if it happens it happens guys it just makes you learn so what i see people do a lot is they like to hover from their from the pads and the legs of the switch you do not want to do that what i've seen people do before is this right They'll, they'll hover from the switch. They're not even touching the pads. You need to actually touch the pad and the leg to ensure a proper bond and a proper solder bond between the two components. If you're not touching them, you're not gonna get a good, a good solder joint. So if you see the solder joint, it's nice and concave and you can see the tip of the pin. I'm gonna do the next one here. So I'm touching the tip, the pin, and I'm putting the solder in, holding for five or six seconds, letting go. As simple as that. It's very simple. The next thing you're probably going to ask me is, Joe, how much times do I clean my tip every time I solder? Now I try and clean my clean my tip as much as I can, but it's not as necessary as you think. As long as you're putting solder in, new solder in, the flux will help the solder get into that channel. When you want to clean it is if you notice certain particles or discoloring of your tip. And if it is discolored or there's like some things you don't want in there like metal bits or uh, old solder, then all you have to do is get your brass, touch it a little bit, let go. Now you might also notice that during soldering, and while you're soldering to the pads, the solder will kind of suck up into the joint. That's completely normal and it's actually really good. When that happens, it means that the solder is sucking into the joint because there's gold contacts or contacts on the top and bottom of the switch. So when it absorbs, it means you have properly soldered the switch. So you just have to hold it a little bit longer, put a little bit more solder and you've done a perfect joint. As long as you don't have a bulgy joint, like a bowl, literal bowl, or the solder is not sticking to the actual pad or the pin, which means you're not pressing the solder, the iron to it, or inserting enough solder to keep the flux in the joint. Keep trying, keep practicing, you'll get there. Okay guys, don't be an idiot like me and put your PCB straight into the case yet. You wanna test it first like we did before at the start, with the tweezers, but in, instead of that, you just want to type on your switches and it should work. Then we can put it into the case, get our screws, and then put our favorite pair of keycaps to match our case. Once we put the keyboard in, we want to put the screws in and adjust the PCB to ensure that none of the keycaps will rub against the case. So what I do is I put the keycaps on all four corners and make sure none of them rub. And once you've done that, you can put your favorite set of keycaps the two I've been given here and sponsored are by Pimp My Keyboard and KBD Fans. We have the Thick PPT on the top and DSA HANA. And here are some typing demonstrations. Alright guys, thanks for watching the video. If you like this video and the way I prepared it so you can make your own mechanical keyboard, please give it a like, share and subscribe because my next video will probably be a follow up so you can ask any questions below if you have any issues and I'll cover them on the next video. I'll be sure to include some desoldering tips and some other things to ensure that you can fix your keyboard if anything happens. But for now guys, yalla bye.